parties stop at the fort just long enough to gather up the supplies and gear needed for the expedition before heading south to Saltport. Unfortunately, Yaramir runs out of the regents he needed to keep Cat going, so they arrive in Saltport without a snow golem. William almost immediately sets out creating a large bonfire while Faris skins some of the frozen knolls to make some fashionable knoll skin cloaks. Sadly, a blizzard sets in, forcing them to wait before lighting the fire for several days. When the weather clears, William lights the bonfire, while the rest of the party searches the skies for the dragon. It is not long before Faris spots Sleet, trying to approach stealthily. Despite Faris and William mocking it, it takes a full hour for Sleet to launch its attack. The skirmish is brief, with an enlarged Faris dealing significant damage. William almost getting crushed by the dragon's claws, and Grimes taking some damage from the creature's breath. Sleet sensing he has perhaps met his match, flees and the party hurriedly pursues it. As fortune would have it, the party run into a group of kobolds who reluctantly agree to lead the party to Sleet's lair. Good old kobolds! It takes many days of travel, during which they learn of giants and strange flying creatures to the south. There is no sight of the dragon during the journey, but it is as if the very land has risen up against them as they face constant storms, delaying the journey by days. Eventually they reach a pass near the lair, but as they start the slow ascent, they are attacked by sleet. This time, the dragon is more cautious and strafes them a couple of times before retreating to its lair. Spurred on by the thought of mounds of treasure awaiting them in Sleet's lair, the party pushes onward, eager to slay the dragon and claim their reward. And it does not take them long to find the entrance. Cautiously, they proceed into the gloomy cavern. They find the wounded creature cornered inside. Driven by frustration and greed, the party makes quick work of Sleet and claim all its treasure for themselves. What useful item will they find in the hoard? Can they train kobold cavalry? What does dragon taste like? Let's find out now on Frozen Frontier. <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Frozen Frontier. How are you guys doing today? Doing um, well. I'm a little yeah, chilly. Well. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, okay. When I first grew a beard, I discovered the wonder of it, like keeping your face warm in the cold. And I'm actually kind of terrified of ever shaving it off and just rediscovering how harsh the winds. Can be. I forgot what I looked like as a as a child. Um, now I know. <laughs> 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 I have a striking resemblance to my 13-year-old cousin, and that's terrifying. Yeah. <laughs> but it bodes well for him when he grows up. Ah, thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> nice save. Nice. Uh, yeah, so how's life going, guys? What have you all been up to? Uh, I was on Heroes Graveyard last night, where, according to Neil, I ruined another encounter. I don't, I don't really believe Stupid that Stupid-ass Quincy piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Are you too good at Dungeons and Dragons, Sean? Yeah, it's not, like I'm not even doing it. I'm literally just like, all right, I'm gonna shoot the thing from as far back as possible. And Neil's like, I did not see that coming. Well, okay, so he's got a he's got a sharpshooter build who allows him to ignore all cover against enemies and all range penalties. And then on top of that, he can like make attacks at plus ten to damage at, if he takes a, a penalty to hit. It's a stupidly broken feat, and it happened to work out really, really well in this one it, combat well, situation. Well, that's not happenstance. That's that's senatoriously broken. Yeah. yeah. Five e. I know. I know. That's just, just that's just five e being being weird. I mean, I'm just frustrated. But, um, by it aside from that, so. I've just been on on break from school. Uh, I started book seven of the Wheel of Time. Finished oh. up with book six. Oh yeah, yeah, I, yeah. Oh man, I I was not like some people were like, man, book six had like my favorite ending of the series, and I was getting all the way up to like the very end. I was like, how is this 
there's nothing special about this. And then I got to the part with Yashiman. <laughs> Holy shit. Okay. <laughs> that was, that was kind of gruesome. <laughs> <laughs> all right Jones, was, we're not we're not talking about the wheel of time here that you're, you're, you're <laughs> the free show for you guys I could example. discuss it forever okay. <laughs> yeah no it's fine greg and i will take this the, uh to a break or something yeah <laughs> you're so uh, close to my favorite part of the series too I, I think that's about it for me oh i've been playing path of exile i got van heel sing up to about level 88 oh nice yep nice. uh so i've been playing that i hate that game but i, I still play <laughs> You pay every game, sure. <laughs> I, I I find that's actually a thing. I'll play my my reaction to a new game is this game is really cool. It's got a lot of interesting mechanics, and once I've got about fifty to a hundred hours in it, I fucking hate this game. I hate everything about it. Why did I ever start playing it? <laughs> John just has very refined taste. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The more the more you play a game, the more you you spot all of its flaws. Like, Mirror's Edge is one of my favorite games ever, but I have never been so angry at a game the time I three-starred every challenge in Mirror's Edge. This means nothing to us, so. <laughs> uh, Mirror's Edge, you, you had challenge runs where you run through a little obstacle course as fast as you can, right? Because Mirror's Edge is the, the game. Yeah, game. free running. Yeah. Um, and and I, I three-starred every challenge, which is you do every challenge as fast as, like, the, the gold star for, mm -hmm. for doing that challenge fast. And I three-starred every challenge. And there's so many little quirks with that game's, like, context sensitivity where I would just like try to springboard off of something and said she'd just like jump into a wall and fall to her death. And I was getting so mad at that uh, game. Yeah. Wasn't that meant to be like not that great of a game? I no, love that game. It's Some one of my people favorite. really, really like it. I got yes. really frustrated with it. It's, I remember it's one before of my it came games. out being super hyped for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just to, compared to everything. Like when was that? Like to work? Years ago. Was it like 2010 or something? Yeah, it was a Wait, 2009. Older. Yeah. So the graphics uh, yeah, is no. really impressive, and it was all. Yeah. It still like, looks good today. Like that's how. Many thing, and then I remember being very disappointed. Mm, <laughs> yeah. And not it's, even like it's, playing past the demo, <laughs> demo mission that. or whatever. I can see that. It's or, it's definitely one of those things. Written. Like I love that game, but I understand why people would dislike it. I think a helicopter started shooting at me, and I got annoyed that my one course of action was to run. And I was like, "All right, I can handle running away from dudes with guns, but when you start bringing in attack helicopters, give me a missile or something." <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's always just running. See, I I always do the challenge runs now, where it's like, "Can I make? Can I play the whole game without shooting anybody? Can I play the whole game without shooting at all?" It's it. Yeah, I don't know. I I like that game a lot, but I definitely get why other people don't. Huh. Well, uh, what about you, Ryan? How's how's life been this last week? Uh, life's been pretty good. Quarter wrapped up. I think I talked about that in the pre-show, but how do you feel about the new generation that you've helped raise? Are they going to be good for us? Well, uh, I don't know. We got one more term to turn around. <laughs> one more term to save this next generation of college freshmen from, I don't know, not understanding physics. You must, you must instill in them a sense of wonder and respect. Yeah, one can try. <laughs> so yeah, that I finished up some of my own work and grading, and then I was just, I burned out. I crashed and played some Dota, unwound the rest Ooh, of the week. You're a Dota player? Uh, I don't know, Nick size, not really, <laughs> sometimes. It's like when the quarter story. ends and I need a break. Mm. Yeah, I've, I've, uh, I love Dota 2, but I haven't played it in forever except no one. Like, all, all of my friends who used to play it were like, I hate MOBAs, and they stopped. You've been playing Hot Strike, Sean. Mm. That's where it's at. Yeah, I do play. I play that with friends. Neil, why don't we play some Hot with Sean? Even we can play Hot with Sean, and I fixed my StarCraft. I fixed oh, it. yes. I all fixed right. it last sure. night just for you, man. That's I can do, do that uh, tomorrow. I can do Hots tomorrow. I can't do it today because I have to drive back to school. All right, can we, can we play StarCraft on the stream, Neil? Yeah, uh, yeah, sure. Too. We can do that. We can All do that right. going forward. Can Sorry. you multitask StarCraft and Pixel Hunter? No, you oh. can't multi StarCraft. <laughs> you, can't, you can't spare any ATMs for the pixels, dude. You can't multitask StarCraft and anything. They just it's it's the worst. I can, multi I can I can multitask StarCraft and anything because the secret. Th this is the secret. I'll share it with you. <laughs> be utter shit at StarCraft, and it doesn't yeah. matter, right? Yeah. I will be just as good pixel hunting or whatever else it is and playing starcraft you don't have to macro if you don't know how to macro uh, okay. i mean you you guys macro me. mean build lots of zerglings and try to kill people before they kill you yeah, uh, so it's all right. yeah. that's about all i got okay. that was the one thing i learned is that i got two units out of one food and i was like <laughs> go i'm gonna build all of these and if i win i win and if i don't well that's normal then somebody builds one help up 
<laughs> I don't know what that is. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. Let's uh, uh, let's move on. Was that Hillbat even in the original Starcraft? No. I didn't play Starcraft no. two. It's a Starcraft two thing. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Uh, oh. Okay. Nick, you look positively glowing. Is it sunny outside? It's not. It's it's not. It's snowy outside. I don't really know what's going on. It's just sunny in this room. Oh. Um, I've, I've been heard, good, man. You're just radiant. Yeah. I am. Um, right. I'm getting. There's this guy starting at work on Monday, and I'm going to be his manager. I didn't oh. find out a few days ago. So that's pretty cool. Um, he did like a geophysics degree, but we work in finance. So I'm sitting there thinking, like, not really sure <laughs> how it's going to help you. Hey, anymore. it worked out good for me. You'd be surprised, actually. In the before, like all the markets crashed back when I was doing my physics undergrad, that was actually a big thing. Oh yeah. To yeah, to like do a physics undergrad and then head into head to Wall Street. Yeah, but it's not physics; finance. it's geophysics, like tectonic plates and shit. Yeah, but it's still a lot of like mathematical modeling. Which yeah, I know that's still what the finance world is like. At the end of the day, physics, right mathematics, there. and engineering teach you to problem solve. And that yeah. is the single most important skill in the world. Yeah, well, right. that, is, that is why I have to take physics as a computer scientist. It's because so, it's why I'm, everyone should take physics. Yeah. <laughs> I also got made of he head of proprietary modeling. So I, I'm building all the models. That's why Ooh. I was able to build Neil's pixel solver thing. In Except like you got the like combined... Yeah, yeah. because wrong, because so. but if you think if you think about that, it doesn't really make sense, right? Because your chance of winning on one on turn one is one percent, say for the ten by ten. Uh huh. <laughs> and then on, on turn two, it's your chance of winning on turn two is higher than one percent because you've you've eliminated some squares. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But then yeah. you can't sum the one percent from the first turn and the one point zero one percent from the second turn to say your total chance of winning up to that point was two point oh one. No, it's no. multiplicative, isn't it? It's so, just going to be one percent plus one percent. Power there's, there's no, there's no strategy in the order you pick the pixels, right? No, no not in the order well, you pick the pixels. Well, sort of. You don't want to, like, if you're trying to be efficient, you might want to, like, place 10 by 10s constantly, and if people aren't going to be joining in you in that, if you just kind of, like, pick at random, I think the then a 10 by 10 will overlap some existing pixels, yeah. so you want to keep everything, like, as smooth and consistent as possible. The only anyway, I didn't, I didn't want to bring it back in first. Controlling chat, right? Controlling yeah, the viewers to like not double click pixels or like fight over the color of one mm. particular pixel. Right, <laughs> right. Planting their national flags. And <laughs> We've had many a flag wars. We had German flags and Swedish flags and Norwegian flags and everything. Everything. But Armenian invaders. To Polish. move away from work, though. To move away from work. Right. Um, I've been playing Into the Breach, which is made by the guys who made Faster Than Light. Oh, they yeah. Faster Than Light. How's Into that? the Breach is pretty sweet. Yeah, man, it's yeah. really good. Really like that. Ooh. And I've also been playing Subnautica. I don't know if I spoke about this last time. You but I just, I just got the, the depth module for the Seamoth, so now I can go deeper than 300 meters. And it's just a whole new world of terrifying down there. Mm. I was like in a little base, like being safe, and then this thing teleported me out of the safe base and killed me. Like, I thought I was safe, and it's just very disconcerting. So, I don't know. That's a really good game, though. Mm. Recommend it. That's me uh, done. You know what else is a really good game? Oh. What? Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's my battle. <laughs> well, let's see what Craig has to say before we hop into D&D. &D. I don't have anything interesting to say. All right, let's I, hop I, into D&D. I, I thought we already did. We already made fun of his baby face. Yeah, 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 yeah. season. I, right. I was trying to shape my beard, and then my shaky-ass hands decided it needed a lightning bolt in it or something. I don't <laughs> know, and so it had to come off. Shut and here I am. Underage for the first time now. <laughs> I might actually get carded. I was I was gonna make that joke. Like, are you gonna get carded? <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, you are currently in Sleet's Lair. All right. <laughs> so, we, are we and finishing we... just after I've pulled the sword out of its face? Um, um, you've walked yeah. around and examined the treasure here. I. I mean, I think that's what it looks like for William. And then you pull the sword out and you look up and Grimes is already uh, <laughs> sitting knee deep in a gold pile. <laughs> yeah, I think we ended last time, like looking around and getting yeah. the best items. Can we get the I layer up on screen? Yo, yes, that's a good yeah, call up the dragon lair. And I think most of this first hour is probably just going to be dungeons and economics, dragons Maybe. and economics. Maybe we'll see. <laughs> we'll see. Also Counting a little bit, way. little bit of cooking with Ferris, I think. <laughs> yeah. eat the dragon. You need um, to start skinning it up. Should I bother rolling appraisal checks? Because you've you've given us the GP value of. Uh, there are, of are the objects that are unappraised. 
right, yeah. So, so give me one appraisal check for away. how good you can appraise the whole set. Alrighty, appraisal. My appraisal skill is a ten. Not great. Not all that smart, but uh, we'll do what he can. Twenty-six. Hey, Success. that's pretty good. So I'm like inspecting this paper lantern, standing yeah. in a pile of gold. What do we? What do we? What do we get with that twenty-six? Well, that paper lantern is a paper lantern, so it's not particularly interesting to you. But the but... fact that there's a paper lantern in this dragon's gold pile. There are two paper lanterns preserved. and a bunch of tattered, ruined paper lanterns around as well. Um, but all of the other things that you're looking at here, you're placing in the range of about two million copper for the other art objects. Um, and there's a separate class of things that we're calling decorative weapons that are clearly separated from everything else. They are maybe not the most practical weapons. You've got like swords with like hooks coming off of them and they look really cool, but you're like, that'd be shitty in actual combat. Um, and those look like about 60,000 copper worth of decorative weapons. Okay, so you said the art objects were 2 million copper? Yeah, ballpark. Part. Okay, so that should be probably our most weight efficient loot then, because I think that'd be followed Almost up. By, always, yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be followed up by gold pieces, so that's a little better. Right, and there are two hundred and eighty-two pounds of our objects. I, I missed a, uh, I mistyped when I first sent it to you guys a couple weeks ago. Yeah, you're looking so at about ten thousand copper to the pound, about eleven thousand copper to the pound actually, uh, with art objects, and then gold is right on ten. So it looks like there's um, about four million coppers worth of. Yeah, we right. should be on the order of about four million copper. Yeah, it's I... pretty good. Neil, what's the current total of wealth that we've sent to the princess? Um, it should be in a record somewhere, right? I do have a record of it. You have sent her two point two million copper. So this is going to be more than double. This what will... we've currently sent. Yes. Great. Good work, guys. It looks like this is a uh, and then uh, huge haul. Having appraised the millions, let's get right to the good stuff. Uh, I mean, there was a there were some things that well, I don't know. I think I'm unsheathing a dagger right now. That uh, yeah. as you unsheath that dagger, you begin to fade <laughs> out of existence. What the fuck? Runs no. <laughs> 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 For a second there, I thought you'd done right, that. I, I shut it back in its teeth. <laughs> and does uh, Neil you, have to redo all the cameras? I do, but it was worth it. Uh, you fade back into existence as you unsheath Whoa. the When dagger. you say fade it out of existence, is he just invisible or...? Uh, no, he was like beginning to disappear a la uh, Back to the Future style. Just kind of like disappearing and then he like shoved it back in and like faded back into existence. Turn Wait, camera back on Let's try it again. Could you fade entirely? Uh, can I get it? Uh, well, hold on. Uh, can uh, it, it'll sheathe and I come back into existence? <laughs> yes. Where is this list of? Well, I'll find. It's in the it's in the Frofro members disco. Yeah, but the, oh. the the magic items it, aren't there. Scroll up. Remember this. There's yeah, there, scroll all the way up, oh, and he's listed of... the books and the yeah. favorite items of the dragon and other things. Okay. In. Dagger, quiver, scimitar, arming so, sword, fan, water. Before cup. we let uh, Grimes kill himself again, uh, perhaps you should allow the wizard to take a look at the uh, potential problems. Uh, Ferris, William, uh, could you gather all of this together in center? It's better for me if I can see it all at once. It will be quicker to identify problems. Sure. Ferris is going to start collecting probably like some of the weapons and uh, other items that, no, that seem that, like... Put that ridiculous thing back. That's not magic. It's just got a, it's just got a yeah, crazy... So we're, we're probably a second blade guessing. welded to the first blade. <laughs> Why does <laughs> the dragon have a tattered lantern unless it's magical? There's a so watering think... can. What kind of dragon needs a watering can? The party spends an hour or so organizing this into pile. It sounds like the dragon had... Already... He didn't have like weapon racks, right? And, like, there were some weapon magic. racks, yeah. Really, but they were like set up as you know decorative like house pieces. Like you've got that um, that screen that's usually behind you when you play. In here with his little dragon claws organizing things, or they organize some. He's got to do something with his free time. Yeah, sets up his little weapon racks, gets his skeletons out, and arranges them with weapons, and has them fight each other on the ground. (laughs) 
So this uh this magic sword, Neil. Which one? Pick the arming sword. You okay. do not know anything about the magic sword. They have yet to identify anything. Yeah, all right. But I tell um, yeah, fine. I, I, I help Yaramir shove everything into the <laughs> Yaramir, can you, will you be able to cast that spell of yours that allows you to see what these things do? Give me time, yes. I will need to play with these items for a little bit. You're going to be busy here, William, anyways. I need you to tend to the pot. We're going to be cooking some dragon meat tonight. Um... Well, I suppose we could try it. All right. So I don't have these spells memorized. However, um, that's, a, that's a lot of hours for Grimesy to play with magic items unidentified. I I did come a little bit prepared. So I I have a detect magic uh, scalp prepared. Um, so as the, everyone gets uh, all the the items situated, um, I kind of take this this uh, scalp out and begin tracing in the the geometric symbol and chanting the words. And I imagine it kind of glows and 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 turns into energy, much like um, most of my scalps do. But seeing as this one I need to see through, I think it stays um, kind of translucent and glowing. And I just hold it up to my face and look through it, and it provides the like cone of sight for detect magic. Very nice. Uh, you notice that there is a magic dagger, a magic quiver, a magic curved sword like a scimitar, a magic straight sword like an arming sword, a magic fan, a watering can that is magical, and two magic paper and paper lanterns, although you see the remains of about a dozen others scattered about. Magic dagger, magic quiver, magic two magic swords. Mm-hmm. Magic sword, <laughs> magic sword, magic watering can. A magic uh, fan, like this sort of fan. It seems like all of these things were in one uh, room. One yeah. Magic. Uh, that a thing that the dragon had organized. Fan, magic paper, lantern. lantern. So convenient. And then um, I look at the books. Are there any? Is there anything coming from any of the books as well? There are many books. Uh, a few of them stand out to you. You will Do be they able. Do stand out magically? No, none of them stand out magically. Right, before um, we move on, he should know the school of the magic, right? Yeah, that was the other uh, thing, too. Uh, yeah, why don't we resolve that while the spell's still... Right, yeah. right, right, right. Uh, it is 10% chance to get the strength and a guaranteed... Per level. Per level. Right, 10% right. per level, yeah, so 60% chance for the strength of the of the magic, and then I should know the... No, the, he knows the strength automatically. The school is the role, I believe. Correct. Is that it? We screwed um, this up last time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Double check right and now. And then I think you you flipped it to justify your confusion for the whole use of one spell, but I think we should just go back. Yeah, we'll just go back yeah. to the original. Just uh, detect is, magic. There is a... There we go. There's a 10% chance if a certain type... Yeah, so you it's 10% for the type of magic, and you can automatically tell the intensity. Okay. Cool. All right, so the dagger is... Was I able to put that down, by the way? I'm not, I'm yes. not cursed or anything. You were able to take it off and put it down. That seems to be fine. <laughs> Someone keep a note of this. I am, yeah. yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, it's all actually... The dragon had organized all the loot for us conveniently. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, the dagger is alteration. Hmm. Um, I'm trying to find the appropriate things here. Uh, the arming sword is alteration. Pretty much every magic item is intensity. Intensity. <laughs> you have to roll for the intensity. Yeah, probably is not doing that yet. Uh, right. Okay. Actually, no. Backwards. The you you, you roll yeah, for yeah. the you roll for the school. You automatically get the intensity. <laughs> yeah. He's yeah. Right. You Neil, you're, you're giving him information. I literally just told you this. Yeah, I wasn't paying attention to what you were saying. I don't think any of us are paying attention to Sean. <laughs> Sean. <laughs> it seems pretty Sean. intuitive to me, right? You you detect magic and you can yeah, tell you which can... auras are stronger or weaker, but yeah. understanding like the nuances of enchantments is more difficult. Or the alterations. Okay. Actually, I thought most things would be because ench enchant an item is enchantment. Right. Well, yeah, but like they don't Again, just a generic plus one sword is going to be enchantment, right? I suppose Probably. Most of there are more alterations. All right. So we're just going to say you passed those three. I'll just hold on. There's a bunch of You'll things here. That's fine. So you can two, you can give three, them those four, three. Five, and six, then, seven, eight. Yeah. Three, that's four, five. Four, five, 
six, seven, eight. Where's two more D10s? Okay. I look at this. You'll get all but three schools anyway, so we're fine. Um, all right, so the dagger is moderate. The quiver is moderate. The scimitar is moderate. The arming sword is moderate. Oh. <laughs> um, what was the third one that you got the school for already? Uh, I only have the school for the dagger and the arming sword. Yeah, I, I only had a, those two. The fan is... Actually, I have to look up the fan again. It's one of the few things that isn't purely customized. The fan... fan is moderate <laughs> the watering can is intense so <laughs> <overwhelming>. yeah <laughs> what was the watering can i'm sure it wasn't intense uh it was it is faint Wait, okay god i was hoping it'd be just like overwhelming an and the... artifact of extreme power <laughs> <laughs> the lanterns are light all right Wait, light? Uh, dim, I'm sorry. Dim, okay. Yeah, dim, faint, moderate, strong, overwhelming are the five categories. Um, pretty much everything is in the moderate. Okay, uh, what were the schools, schools that we had? All right, schools, the dagger and the quiver and the fan are all alteration. Um, the watering can is summoning. Whoa. It summons water. <laughs> it, might be like an, it might be an infinite watering, water, watering can, right? That'd be pretty good, actually. That'd mean we don't. Uh, have so that water. should be all I get because you already, already gave me the arming sword as well. Oh, perfect. I was about to give you the arming sword again. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So uh, this stuff's magical, is it, Yarmir? Yes, yes. These items here, they all uh, glow with magic. Uh, I will need to spend some time with them tomorrow to uh, identify them. Can you do that here? I could do that here, yes. I will need to have space uh, to set up my ritual, but... Uh, you can use one of the... Problem. As the you're talking about this, I think Ferris picks up the scimitar and, and pulls it out of its... Uh, you are not a cautious man. <laughs> Ferris is not a cautious person. Uh, it's sheath? I don't... You don't really use standard... It, it wouldn't be it's standard. You the scimitar that I have, you like unclip the back of the sheath. Yeah, I don't so remember like what a that's blade called. Yeah, kind of is, is it still called a sheath? It's a sheath, but it like it's got buckles down the back. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah, that's that's okay. Just casually mentioning you own a scimitar. <laughs> okay. oh, the scimitar of the iron looks like this. I mean, you don't <laughs> yeah. have any swords on hand. Yeah, do you not own any swords? I don't, no, I don't own any swords. I own two. <laughs> Got, fucking like, geeks. Three or four of them oh, over there. There's a shield. <laughs> I don't know any swords either. Just, just nerd things. Yeah. Yeah. Just. So, do we have descriptions, Neil? Can I get a description of my sword? The arming sword. Uh, <laughs> your arming sword has a grasshopper inlaid along the, the handle of it. Ooh, uh, a grasshopper, hey. Yeah, other than that, I, it looks uh, fairly standard. It's got like a an ironish blade. It's not quite iron. It's some sort of like alloy it's got like a, a sheen to it that looks off um i i pick it up right yep I'm, i try and jump do you leap across the room yes all right uh, i think i worked yeah. out what this one did <laughs> uh so i'm gonna so i think sean was actually first yeah so before, looking at uh, the nick cut right it now. nick cut in we Sean's ca or, uh, Ferris cautiously looking at the scimitar, and then all of a sudden William just leaps across the. <laughs> it's just the like room. a manager to interrupt you and take all the glory. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sounds about right. Uh, but yeah, I pull I pull the scimitar out of the sheath and uh, take a look at it. What does it look off in any way? Is there anything noteworthy about it, description wise? Uh, yeah, it has a, a pommel with a hawk's head in it that's kind of like facing down, and uh, it's got these jet stones for the eyes of the the hawk. 
Ferris um, is officially a heron marked blades master. Let's do it. <laughs> I was about to make a joke that I jump off the side of the mountain to see if I can fly now, but uh, <laughs> don't do that, please. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I guess while we're all upgrading our weapons, I'll. Uh, Yes, I'll get, please. I'll get a description of disappear. <laughs> I'll get a description of that dagger if I could. Sheathed, sheathed. Sure. Sheathed. Uh, let me. I'm just on a different page for a moment. Let's see. Uh, so the dagger sheath looks pretty regular. It's just some leather um, okay. wrapped and together. The, the the dagger handle itself is silver and it is inlaid with uh, turquoise and what looks maybe like ivory and then some other black stones. Um, it looks, I'm just gonna use this dagger that I just have sitting around. Oh, I know, I remember that one. Yeah, it looks somewhat like that. All right. Um, what was that again? I'm writing all these down in a list. <laughs> it's a silver pommel inlaid with Take a screenshot. ivory and onyx. <laughs> Okay, inlay with ivory and onyx, got it. Does it menace with spikes of copper? It does not. Okay. Um, and can I get a description of what it was like to fade away last time before I do it again? Did it, was uh, it like I was going to- You just noticed, everyone else was like, what? And you looked and you could just see your hand become semi-transparent and then you- Did the dagger in. fade with him? You know, I think you're a little bit too caught yeah, up I mean, in what was I'll do it again. If it didn't feel like I was being transported to another dimension from whence I can never return, uh, I'll go ahead and, and try it. And Have you been again. teleported to other dimension often? Uh, in, an, in another life. It's as, fine, as another Rhymes, name. give it a try. Uh, you take but it so out. I, I like to inspect the blade, and I guess in doing so, invoke its its power. Hopefully, not a charged power. Uh, it has a, a some sort of iron alloy blade. Mm -hmm. And you begin to fade and fade until you're about 50% is, is transparent yeah, and then the fading stops. Oh my God. It's it's like uh, thingy invisibility, 50% concealment. Yeah. That's that's insane. Valuable for our, our scout. <laughs> Valuable can for I, anyone, man. Can I pull a cloak over my head and hide in plain sight? You can pull a cloak over your head and you're still 50% invisible. <laughs> All right. <laughs> But when we, when we, ooh, you know what we could do? If we get you a white cloak. Mm-hmm. Ooh. Or a cloak of dragon one. scales or yeah. yeti fur. Or or he has like feathered wings. We could use those as oh. well. Oh. Mm -hmm. All right. Does the dragon have feathered wings, Neil? Or was that just a quirk of the of the icon? It's just a quirk of the icon. I spent uh, like four hours yeah. trying to find a dragon token that would work and trying to change other tokens to work. Okay, it, okay, so it just has normal scaly dragon wings. It's a I, normal leathery dragon wings, that, no feathers. Did, did they really not have a normal white dragon? I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, never mind. Uh, yeah, we'll get you some dragon scales for cloak, I guess. All right, so Yarmir, so, how, yeah, I will, how long I'm, do you need? Okay, go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Uh, Yarmir, how long do you need to identify all this stuff, do you think? Mm, I will probably need an entire day. Uh, the ritual itself will only take uh, six or eight hours, but uh, it is very costly to my personal health. I will need a day to recover. And you can do all of, it, all of this stuff in one day? Mm, probably most of it. Okay, okay. I mean, we've, uh, we've already discovered yours, William, with your adventurous spirit. So that's it one. It would be wise to not think you have discovered all things. Many I agree. items have hidden and uh, unknown properties, even if their original purpose seems obvious. Agreed. Um, does anyone make note of the day that we were expecting the ship back at Saltport? Uh, what month is it? July. I wrote it. I wrote it down, but it was on my parents' computer. It's like so. the middle of the month, I think. I don't remember. It is the 19th of July right now. Did anyone take you note of that? You're getting picked up by Zaz, right? Nope, you're getting picked up by Becca. Yeah, Becca, yeah. Uh, well, we we wanted... need to... I, I asked for more time. I don't remember if you guys went through with it. I think we got two months from whenever we got dropped off, but... Yeah, so it's probably what, another... We probably got another month. <laughs> We're we gonna have to start tracking the ship times too. <laughs> I will. I just. I would rather not. No. I, well. It's, I thought, it's what's yeah. done is okay, done. we have not screwed around I, too much. So if we gave ourselves two months, we have plenty of time. Like we. Well, we got stuck in a blizzard at the base of the mountain for a long time. Right, and that was about ten days. But we have like sixty. For for that two month period. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Um, 
So what I'm going to just you... tell you guys, since you probably would remember, uh, it's around the, the 25th of August that yeah. she returns. So five weeks. Yeah. All right. Anyone got any idea how we get all this back to Saltport? Well, we do have adoring supporters who think that we're gods, and we just killed their old gods, so why don't we have them help carry all this back? Are they still out there? Rhymes, go and have a look. So the couple never followed support. us up the mountain, did they? No. But oh, okay. I also right. want to note um, that there is I... 1,784 pounds of wealth. Even yeah. if you don't bring the copper and the silver, you're still dealing with 6, 600 pounds of wealth. Yes. Um, so that's a lot. Which, I mean, if you add it all to the sled, it's about 120 pounds, which I think we can pull if, like, William the and Ferris The sled can pull together. a max of 1,000 pounds if you have 10 dogs pulling on it. Um, you guys have, I think, eight with you right now? Oh, yeah, we did a weird dog thing. Oh, where right. Was, where did you talk about the dogs? Um, there was so, a weird dog thing. Right, so, this, right so for the, the viewers... Um, what, what about this, Neil? Why don't we say that the dogs continue to pull the, the same amount as before, and then we change that whole thing once we get back to the fort and can re... Uh, the I would number rather of just say that, that you have this. dogs, more dogs with you this whole time. So for the viewers, I made a mistake when initially creating the, the dog sleds, and I screwed up some weights, and I should have laid it out more clearly, well, and there have been, the dogs have been pulling Way too much weight as of Only late. So to know, they were we had them in. They were fully encumbered, and we were giving them max move. Right, what, which oh, is way we too think... much weight for them. Sure, it's yeah. like double. Uh, yeah. So, so, so my, to my make problem... sense of it, we're just going to say that you had all eight dogs with you. My problem with this is we that we, 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 that ra we brought rations based on those dogs, right? If we have more dogs, we're going to be burning through more rations. That's... Yeah, we need to. We need to get. I, I think the smoother transition is to say we had four dogs and we somehow got here encumbered and not worry about that it took that we moved faster than we should have. I mean, I'm easy yeah. way. I, like, I, I mean, I was going to give you more dogs so that you would have more pulling power for the treasure that's, going forward. But if you want to take a nerf to your movement right now, that's fine too. Like we can uh, have more dogs. I'm just worried about the food aspect of that. Well, there's I don't a lot. Think there's a lot. I think there's it's better for us if we magically get eight dogs, but. How let's, many, just take, let's take how, the dogs. How many days of rations do we so, have? So nothing we do will give us eight dogs. We only have seven total. Okay, seven. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> so three more dogs is two food a day, and we only spent like 20 days out here, yeah. right? Um, yeah, but we left some of it back in the, the fort. Yeah, we did. We left some of it in Saltport. How we much have do we have on this? two pounds of food. How much? 302 pounds of food. That fine. seems fine. Yeah. yeah. You'll be fine. Okay. All right, Greg, so we can carry 700 pounds total on the sled. Is that what you're saying, Neil? Is that more if we help pull? That The dogs can pull 700 pounds. You can so, add your strength yes. to it, but then you'll so, be moving at your speed instead of dog speed. And yeah. then we can even encumber the dogs further. The dogs can't really move through the snow effectively when encumbered. They have to stay at unencumbered to be effective oh, dog pullers. Do you have a spreadsheet or something for all this? Just 700 pounds is what the dogs can pull. 100 pounds per dog. Okay. Nice and easy. So we let's, might be uh, able to let's pull make everything. 20 pounds per dog so that we're working in the effective weight of okay. the sled, yeah, which yeah. is right, yeah. which is the number we've been kind of using. <laughs> All right, that's fine. Works. Um, are, is this dog sled outside right now? Yeah, yeah. we'll speak. The dog's yeah. barking right outside the cave. And uh, the kobolds never followed us up this. Uh, they did not. The slopes, right? Yeah, they're, if they're still around, they're like a day down the mountain. <laughs> right, a couple days probably. <laughs> Um, oh, I want I think, uh, William distracted me from other things of interest. Um, I guess I was looking at some poor soul's remains left in the, like, is this a dead body wrapped, there are in, many... wrapped in light chain mail? Or, I, mean, I guess uh, there are many, no, the, many at this bodies. point, it's just the chain mail lying around, but it, it's scattered and there's little tattered bits of it, but it's extremely lightweight. Are there any large segments of it? Uh, yeah, there's a segment maybe that could go across your like, belly it, but just your feels, belly does it feel supernaturally light or uh magic like it was once magic and now it's torn apart or just uh, a no, fancy it, alloy it looks is it aluminum <laughs> uh no it, it looks like it's some sort of steel alloy to it but uh it's just built in a, a thinner chain um that somehow still seems very strong and sturdy uh, it might seem supernatural to grimes actually mm -hmm. <laughs> So it may be worth collecting. Uh, sounds like Faris might be interested in this. But sounds like yeah. uh, Ferris. Have you seen Ferris? Is this Elven chain? 
he would have I, probably. I don't know. I, if Ferris, I, you can I, guess. I say that, and then I immediately were. Well, actually, may, actually, maybe I look. Do I have any? Maybe like, Grimes makes a connection. Like, if we can say this is Elven Chain, Ferris gets this off the top of our of our cut. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Can Ferris just, off the top? Does Ferris have like an Elven? Yeah. Would I have any like, any like uh, proclivity toward descri- uh, recognizing that? No, you wouldn't. You okay. you're social outcast. Right. Suspect though. We can suspect. Yeah. This yeah. is definitely Ferris, this is definitely Elven Chain. <laughs> really let's, now, let's, let's note note that for the for your captain's log. Pass it here. <laughs> and I Very guess we can slow. collect those scraps. I think it yeah. yeah. Alright, well maybe maybe mix it in with some uh with some dragon scales. As long as we're speaking of can elven things. When Are I... any of those books written in Elven, Neil? Uh no. They are not uh, out of character because Grimes is illiterate. There is one titled Elves and Enchanter's Worst Nightmare. Yes, there is. It's a great uh, book. I'll, I'll, I'll take a look at that. Uh, well, you can't read. The only person I that can, can even read. get any. Well, can't. you can't read Old Caldonian. Oh, okay, right. Yeah, right. so Greg is the only person with a little bit of help who has been able to figure out this language. Got it. And I think we said he pretty much figured it out by now. Yeah, right? I, I like think. He can, he would, like, or how to translate it. Without uh, right, without given time, he will be fluent. Um, I think at this point, he still needs a little bit of help to to read. Yeah. What were you say, Yaramir? So, I, um, first question I think got answered here. The, the books are entirely in Caldonian, correct? Yes, yes. Okay. Second, um, would I have a, any um, knowledge of Elven Chain because I was met by like Elven royalty um, when they did all their testing and prodding on me? Did anyone have it ceremonially like donned? Ooh. Give me Ooh. an intelligence check to see if you can reach that far back and make a connection between sure. these two things. How about a 27? Yeah, you know what? There is, there's definitely a similarity to this. You remember seeing the, the armor from the, the guards that were with that, uh, the, the investigators. And it had this sort of like flatness to the chain. It wasn't nice and, and rounded like the chain mail that you've, your people made. Mm-hmm. Um, and this has that same sort of flatness to it. Okay, very cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll let you, like I kind of, int- I, I tell Ferris basically, like I've, I've seen armor like this uh, garbed in, in uh, the, the, the royalty of the elves or the, the higher class of the elves. It seems very reasonable to see the elven mate. Well, I wish we could find something beyond scraps, but I suppose we just have to keep looking. Perhaps an armor smith could put it back together. Perhaps. Uh, looking yeah. at the scraps that we've collected, does it look like enough for a full suit that could be repaired, or is it just it's beyond? Repair? No, but you could like link link together sh- dragon scales. It's it's pretty tattered. It yeah. doesn't really look super repairable. Hey, I'm the proficient appraiser here. I'm telling you, these scraps of Elven Chain are still valuable items. That <laughs> was whether, whether the DM thinks so or not. Our two sentences them. are not mutually exclusive. They can be useless for armor and still valuable. So I come over and say, uh, why are you guys so interested in this? Can't you make uh, armor out of the dragon? Possibly. <sighs> I don't know exactly what I'm going to have to cut off. That's why you're going to have to help me with the cooking tonight, William. Yeah, I'm going, to try cutting, I'm going to try skinning it in a few different places with a few different methods. I'm going to try taking it with its hide in some places with cert- with differing uh, thicknesses, and in some places I'm just going to take scales. Well, if you know what you're doing, I, uh, I've never seen dragon armor before. I'm not. <clears throat> I point to your shield. Well, aside from this. I mean, I don't know how effective it would be. It seems pretty tough. I say, like, stabbing the... Just, like, <laughs> stabbing the scales a bit with my sword. Please like, it don't doesn't... ruin the good dragon hide, William. No, look, it's it's deflecting it. It's, it's sturdy. <laughs> well, look, I say... Uh, scales, man. First things first. We can spend a day or two here. So, uh, why don't we... Um, we got much fire left on the sled? Uh, much logs left on the sled? Yaramir? Um, yes, I know exactly how much that is, and that is uh, 48 pounds. No, 252 pounds. Oh, great. So we, we can... use 48. We have 252 remaining on the slide. So we can stay up here for like 10 days and burn a fire nonstop. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great. So I, I go and get some logs and start lighting a fire uh, in the middle of the room. And I say, well, feel free to do as you will. Grimes, if you want to go swimming in the coins, that's okay. Yaramir, if you want to... 
<laughs> shuffle everything away into a little room and start preparing your um your drawings. That's that's fine too. And uh, Faris and I here will work on carving up the dragon. Leave the skinning to me. Just keep an eye on the pot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I uh, I go jump on the dragon's back. Is it easy? Uh, I mean, you have to climb up onto it. Oh, yeah, no, you've got the sword, yeah. Yeah, jump. you can <laughs> leap onto the dragon's back. Not a problem. It doesn't need to be unsheathed. It just needs to be... No, it has to be unsheathed to do it. All right. You ride that dragon. <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome. Do I? How high can I jump now? Can he smack his head on the ceiling? <laughs> I was going to say, there's like a little stall like right hanging from the ceiling. Uh, you can jump up to 30 feet. Uh, I, straight up or forward, and after practicing, you can jump about 10 feet backwards. So, for my own knowledge, it's as the jump spell, right? As the jump spell, yeah. Great. This is awesome. I climb back down. I, uh, does it feel well-weighted? Like, does it feel like a good sword as well, or does it seem like an ordinary it's sword? It's a piece of, of shit this? sword, man. It's like, no, it's, yeah, it's great. It's a fucking magic sword. It's great. It's, it's fantastic. Okay. Did we lose Sean? We did. He'll... He's yeah, been having internet fine. problems. It, it'll, it'll, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It'll be fine. <clears throat> Great. Um, All right. I am. There's something I wanted to do. Oh, I wanted to ask about the decorative weapons. Are any of them steel and of you and useful, or is it all? They're like, all decorative. art objects. Yeah. Yeah. None of them are particularly uh, combat worthy. Back. Okay. Yay! He's gonna go again. Uh, well, nope. Yep. Nope. Maybe I don't know. Oh, it says my connection's unstable. What happens? I, we'll I find out. We. I can. I can attest to this. Your connection is very unstable, Sean. <laughs> it is unstable. <laughs> I'm like a robot. Uh, uh, right now, you're still. frozen in like a pixelated action pose. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> and it's Sean swiping to the side. It looks like you're punching yourself in the face, actually. Oh, that's good. That's and totally thing. nonchalant about it. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to the, um... the beard is absorbing the blow. Uh, all right, well, let's continue uh, while, sure. while Sean's internet waffles. Um, what other things do you guys need to do before we move on? Uh... I know I'm. Oh, I am proficient in swimming. Oh, I can totally swim in this pile of money. Good, <laughs> I, good idea. Good idea, Nick. Just gonna well, Scrooge I, McDuck it up. I think I'm the only proficient swimmer in the party, aren't I? Yeah, Scrooge McDuck. Is it big enough? How big is? What are we looking at here? How many? You're looking at thousands of pounds of metal. Yeah, that's 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 swimmable, or at least a uh, copper angelable. Yeah. Oh, these are hundreds of pounds of coins, so but like tens of thousands of coins. Yes. Mostly silver. Almost enough to hide a dragon under. Almost <laughs> enough. Maybe if it were a little bit bigger of a dragon. Yeah, that might help it hide. Yeah. <clears throat> Chucky. So uh, I can identify f five things. Okay. Uh, Did you I not level up, Greg? Huh? Did you not level up? The identify spell allows you to identify five things. No. It's one per level. per level. No. You're allowed a 10% chance to identify per level, and you can identify five things. That was because so you level five. five. Five items, maybe, but it's one property per level. Sure. And that can, be, yeah, it's one property per level, and that can be distributed amongst any number of things at your choosing. <laughs> Unless they changed it, you know. I don't know. One function of a multifunction item. One function item. per handling is all I see, and I can I can learn five different functions. That's all I'm. I'm like reading the spell. I don't care. Yeah. You let me get six. Who gives a shit? Yeah, yeah. Way, one per level. One I, the example is, i.e., a fifth level wizard. One of these things can't be identified, and I can only identify one like thing per it's, each or mm -hmm. i can double up right so what is our importance of items is what i was going to say because we might want to know more than one thing about an item potentially potentially yeah uh, i think the uh the swords the quiver and the dagger seem the most important but uh, do you have more than one pal can we not just spend two days yeah we well, can yeah, spend multiple quiver. days usually yeah. that's not something you're inclined to do I mean, I think if we spend that, maybe not one day after another, but if we do one day a break and then another day. Well, aren't we just okay. sitting up here? I mean, aren't we, we're just trying to get all this 
coinage back to Treasure well, Town. At, at some point, we're going to have to discuss what we're going to do because it's not Treasure Town we need to go to, it's Saltport. And I've got right. a couple of ideas, but right. I want to talk over dinner. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right, Dad. All right, so why don't we... We'll, we'll discuss this over dinner. Why don't we go to break? Wait for Sean. Uh, yeah, why don't we go to break? Wait for Sean. And when we come back, we will do a little bit more fro-fro. So see you soon. Goodbye.